After sensational performances in both the Champions League and La Liga, Lucas Silva is now considered the most valuable player and the best player in this Sevilla squad, which is insane. His form currently is 8.7 and of course being the best player in the squad means that he is also the best defender in the squad. He also scored his first Champions League goal in the previous episode and I do recommend you guys going back and watching that goal because it was a sensational strike from the Brazilian fullback. Even though he performed so well in the last few episodes and he's been scoring goals, assisting goals, doing well defensively as well, he somehow managed to not get picked for the upcoming Brazilian national team friendlies. I have no idea and so does this Brazilian football a fan account and yeah everyone's basically confused on why Lucas Silva hasn't made the Brazilian national team squad. Lucas himself, his morale is really low right now so let's hope next few results it can go Sevilla's way, it can go Lucas's way and things can all be all right. But anyways, hey guys how is it going? It is S2G and welcome back to another episode of the My Player Career Mode series. First of all, I just want to thank you all for your support on this series. I mean, we're in August, a month where FIFA is supposedly dead, but you guys are showing insane support on this series. And tell you what, if you guys smash out 450 likes today, I will give you guys another episode of the My Player series tomorrow itself. So it's up to you guys. Go down there and drop a like on this video. For now, we've got our first game of this episode and it is being played on the legendary difficulty. So I'm really eager to see how Lucas Silva can cope with the legendary difficulty if it's not good if it's not fun if the gameplay is not fun specifically if it's not enjoyable content to watch i will change it back to world class as lucas silva has a massive opportunity to put sevilla into the lead but that is one highlight i probably never want to see again because what even was that you guys know driven shots sometimes can be very unreliable and hence that one goes to row Z, but Lucas here puts in a good challenge and you guys can already see the effects of legendary difficulty the time is now 65th minute and until then nothing much happened it was just back and forth football from both Valencia and Sevilla and honestly that isn't fun to watch and I guess after this game I'm gonna put the difficulty back down to world class I'm here to produce entertaining content for you guys entertaining gameplay and not prove to anyone that I can you know beat legendary difficulty and all so that is why I'm gonna be putting it back to world class you guys can already see the teammates even on world class they actually really do well like my teammates but now on Legendary, it kind of feels like my teammates have forgotten how to play football and they now play like toddlers, which is really weird. But anyways, this game against Valencia does come to an end and the scoreline is nil-nil. So yes, we're going to be reverting back to world class so that you guys can get entertaining gameplay. Anyways, Lucas didn't really have that bad of a game. In fact, it was decent. A 7 match rating is actually really good for a left back. Of course, lately Lucas has been getting 8.8s, 9.5s and all. But sometimes it's okay to have a bad game. 84% passing percentage though, which is not bad. One shot off target. And as you guys can see, I am putting the difficulty back down to world class. Also, I thought I'd ask you guys, what difficulty would you prefer? World class or legendary? Let me know down in the comment section below. After that game against Valencia, Lucas was just chilling in his apartment, extremely disappointed for not getting picked for the upcoming Brazil games, and he had to watch the games on TV. Now, that was really disappointing for him, especially considering how well he played in those last friendlies. So, that was something that really hit him hard, not playing for Brazil in those two friendlies. But let's hope Lucas can pick himself up, and the best way to do so is get back in training, practice football, and try and get better and better throughout every training session that's exactly what Lucas Silva is doing right now practicing his crossing you guys know that's been a very crucial part of his game lately he crosses the ball a lot and last episode you would have seen him put in a fantastic cross to Ben Yedder it was a bit of a low cross that somehow really worked so yeah definitely makes sense training Lucas Silva's crossing and he gets himself a C in this training drill which is not that bad you know what, even though Lucas hasn't been picked for the upcoming friendly games, he knows that the Copa America 2019 is the main goal, so he's got to increase his overall and his performances as much as possible so that he gets the opportunity to play for Brazil and hopefully win an international tournament. As Luis Muriel picks up an injury for the next five weeks, that is not good news. Luckily, the club does have Ben Yedder, who we know is a solid, solid striker. As Sevilla now come up against Malaga. We're back on world-class difficulty, so I'm hoping I can get you guys some entertaining gameplay. 
for this game as the first attack falls Malaga's way. Some good passing football from them. Again, great build-up play. For some reason, they managed to win the header then. The ball finds its way to Idei, who gets the shots off with his left foot. Who says world class is easy as Malaga have taken the lead? And guess what? This guy does this celebration. This is by far the most annoying celebration in FIFA 18. For me at least. I'm okay with the dab now because it's been done so much. I've kind of got used to it. But that celebration is just so frustrating. Let me know what is the most annoying FIFA celebration in the comment section below. But in the 17th minute, we do get some good football here from Zivkovic who beats a couple of players. And the new signing that Sevilla made this season puts the ball into the back of the net with a phenomenal finish. The way he just dribbled past those two players was just brilliant to watch. He's celebrating with the fans. New signing and he's announced himself. The number seven is here to stay. Zivkovic gets us the equaliser. But chance now for Malaga as the cross is played and Longley gets it away. But the ball finds its way to Reco, who turns, gets the shot. I'm not even sure his name was Reco, but regardless. Reco, I think. I'm not sure. But Sergio Rico, that I'm sure of. Pulls off a good save. I think he's made a move to the Premier League if I'm not wrong. Which is a great move for him as Lucas Silva does well to find the ball to Zivkovic. Who couldn't convert that. He probably should have because that was a fairly simple chance though. And Zonzi plays it out wide to Lucas Silva. And here he goes with that pace. Cutting inside the defenders. Don't know what to do. Jesus Navas making the run down the other wing. Gets the shots off. But you know what? That was a terrible attempt from the Spaniard, really should have done better there, uh, Joaquin Correa plays it now into Lucas Silva, Lucas Silva out wide to Wissam Ben Yedder who gets taken down brutally there by one of the Malaga defenders, Lucas was making his run inside a inner overlap or whatever you want to call it, underlap as I would say, um, but uh, the Malaga defender wasn't letting that happen, but Lucas Silva with a sensational effort on the volley, that was actually a brilliant effort and a fantastic set piece from Sevilla and that was so close to being one of the best goals we're ever gonna score in this series but now maybe a chance for us late on Zivkovic on the ball we know how good he is turns plays the pass to Nolito who gets the shots off but the opposition's keeper makes the save and that is how unfortunately this game comes to an end as we draw against Malaga which is definitely a bit disappointing but you know what one thing you would have noticed we drew in this game we, of course, it was also a draw in our previous game, but this game was a lot more entertaining for you guys to watch. And that's what World Class Difficulty brings to the table. So, yes, we're going to be sticking to World Class as Lucas Silva, a second consecutive seven match rating. Lucas definitely needs to step his game up. Otherwise, well, the Copa America 2019 dream will remain a dream itself because we've got to make it a reality. And for that, Lucas needs to keep his game up. Last episode, I guess, was an anomaly because the performances Lucas put in the last episode were just unreal. Let's hope Lucas can rediscover that kind of form. Sevilla have dropped down to third place, which isn't really that bad because they're only a point behind Barcelona and Madrid. But for now, it's time to, you know, focus on the Champions League as Lucas Silva now has a huge task against a team like Spurs coming up against the likes of Harry Kane, Hyung min Son. This is going to be one hell of a game. The Champions League anthem in the background. We know it's hype. Champions League action, Sevilla versus Spurs. And you know what? This game is important. It could potentially decide who finishes first in the group. And keep in mind, we've got to try and finish first to get the easier opponent. Last season, we got Chelsea, I believe, in the round of 16. And you guys know things didn't really turn out well. So I'm really hoping this one can be a bit different. Here's Mauricio Pochettino, top, top coach. And one day, maybe, um, Lucas Silva could be playing under him. And also, talking about playing for a different club, accidentally in the previous episode, I put a Man City logo on one of Lucas Silva's uh, inform cards. That was completely accidental. Let me just get that out of the way as Harry Kane might have a chance. Ball finds its way to Christian Eriksen, who strikes it really well. And we know he can strike the balls really well. But thankfully, it wasn't on target. Eriksen with a fabulous pass to Kane. And look at that for a touch from Harry Kane to get it onto his right foot. Sergio Rico again with a solid save. He's been really good in goal. As again, another chance for Spurs. It's been all Spurs in this game. Just Quincy Promise, one of their new signings, finds Victor Wanyama, still Wanyama. Plays the ball to Eriksen. Eriksen now gets the shots off and Sergio Rico with another fantastic save. It's been all Spurs so far, but maybe a chance now for Sevilla. As it's Lucas Silva putting it across, it finds its way to Ben Yedder. 
but Loris, we know he's a terrific keeper, comes up with a solid save. And now a chance though for Spurs as Harry Kane on the ball finds Deli Ali brilliantly done to Son. And Son with a great finish to put Tottenham into the lead as we are a goal down to Tottenham. We do not want to be losing this. As I said, it's very important to get, of course, first place in a Champions League group. But this might be our chance to score as we some Ben Yedda finds Nolito. Nolito into Ben Yedda. Now Clement Longley with a chance to give us the equaliser. But that was a terrible attempt from him really should have done better now a chance though for Spurs ball finds its way to Quincy promise it goes for the finish shot from outside the box and tell you what that was pretty close to going in but again Sergio Rico probably man of the match for me as here's Lucas Silva on the ball terrible pass though from Lucas there Zivkovic heads it back into Lucas this could be our final chance of the game Lucas pushing forward and Zonzi now lobs it and it's with Aurea right now, but Clement Longley making a tackle in the opposition's box. And Ben Yedder with the goal. Somehow, Sevilla survive and they get the draw against Spurs. You know what? Undeservedly, I think that's the way I'm going to describe this performance. Because Tottenham were all over us in this Champions League tie. But somehow, we grind out the draw from this game. But is it all over? Could we see a chance from Spurs? Hopefully not. As the ball is now with Son. Lucas Silva tackles him brilliantly. And here he goes. Forward, plays this one out wide now with Clement Longley. Clement Longley and Lucas Silva, the centre back and left back of the team, linking up well. Brilliantly done to find Nolito. What a chance for the Spaniard to give us the win in this game. But Loris with a brilliant save. And to be fair, the effort from Nolito wasn't good enough as his shot was not really the best of them. So the game does end in a one all draw. The Champions League game against Spurs ends in a one all draw. And a 7.3 match rating for Lucas Silva. He hasn't really regained that kind of insane form that he had in the previous episode. Hopefully he will in the next few episodes. Because it's so much fun scoring goals with him, honestly. That long shot we scored in the previous episode was insane. 92% passing percentage for Lucas, which isn't that bad. And all in all, I guess it was a decent performance from Lucas Silva in this episode. But I still feel he could have done much better. A couple of draws. In fact, all three games end in a draw. That's probably a first time for this series. I'm not too sure about that. But Sevilla somehow still top of their Champions League group, which is very, very good. Hopefully next episode, when we do play our Champions League games, we can get some wins and hopefully Spurs will drop some games but anyways these are the way objectives are going for Lucas Silva not bad at all hopefully tackling he'll improve upon very soon but defensively he has improved a lot as you would have seen Lucas tackling Son in that previous game but that is it for today's episode really hope you guys are enjoying the series next episode we've got Atleti that's going to be one hell of a game subscribe if you're new around here drop a like if you've enjoyed today's episode and I will see you guys soon for another episode of this series